Please. Do you know your worth? And if so, how do you measure it? Is it found in how much money you make, the type of education you have, the family you come from? Or is it found in your physical appearance? The definition of worth is the level at which someone or something is valued or rated. But what if I was to tell you that that definition is all wrong? We all, you just don't know what someone has gone through. Much like the person to the left or the right of you, we all have invisible scars. There are things that have happened to us that will remain with us, but do they define us? Do you relate your worth to what you have been conditioned to think about yourself? Tonight, we will journey together as I reveal stories of my invisible scars, scars that I allowed to define my worth. I always wanted that full house kind of family, the one where, Ma, where dad would give his little girl a big hug and kiss and let her know how much he loved her, even when she made a mistake. But that wasn't my reality. Instead, my childhood is overshadowed with memories of physical, emotional, and verbal abuse. I felt overlooked and worthless. And I spent endless nights pleading with God to take my life because I just couldn't take another day of misery. All I wanted was to be loved by my father, to be his princess, and for him to be my hero. There was no need for an alarm in my home. Without fail, I would wake up to my parents yelling and cursing at each other, the sound of dishes and glasses being broken, the sound of slaps and punches against flesh. I would run out of my room in hopes of stopping the argument, but in between insults and expletives, they would yell at me and tell me to go to my room and get out of there. With tears streaming down my eyes, I would beg them to stop, but they paid no mind to me as they escalated the fight, MMA style. Inevitably, I became a casualty to their destructive behavior. The man that was supposed to be my protector hurt me time and time again. No amount of I'm sorry letters could erase the damage that was being done to my identity. My childlike wonder and innocence was officially stolen from me. No longer was I a soft, sweet little girl. I had lost all respect for my father. And now I had become an angry little girl who hated men. All men, that is, except for my grandpa. He passed away when I was 22. That's when I fell apart. I used alcohol and sex to escape the sadness and depression. I didn't find myself worthy of love. And so I would self-sabotage every relationship or nice person that came my way. I recognized the crazy person I had become, and I embraced her. I became selfish, violent, reckless, and mean. And from that day forward, I decided that I was going to become a black widow. I wanted to hurt men and make them feel useless and worthless and unloved, just like I was made to feel all those years. See, I desperately needed love. I desperately longed for acceptance from my father. I desperately needed an encouraging word spoken over my life. So to fill the void, I would take acceptance from strange men who would fondle me and in the same breath where they'd tell me I was special, and in the same breath, they would fondle me. See, my worth was found in what others told me I was. My worth was found in how others treated me, how much money I made, the kind of car I drove, the house I lived in. I didn't know my inherent worth. And so it began. After graduating from university, cum laude, I became a party stripper. 
Kiki. That was her name. She was the queen bee. Whatever Kiki wanted, Kiki got. But in my personal life, I was powerless. It's dark, and I can't help but wonder where he is. I use my clicker to set the car alarm off, and I stumble to the car and quickly get inside. I throw my backpack off, and I begin to worry about him. I've got his wallet and cell phone. I turn on the radio, and then I hear a bang, bang, bang. It's my boyfriend, and he's furious. See, about an hour earlier, he had been ejected from the party we were at. I roll down the window, and his hair's all a mess, and he's all dirty, and he tells me the cops had roughed him up. Oh, he is so pissed. He tries him to pull me out of the car window. I mean, I freak. My Prince Charming has flipped the switch. So I throw the car into drive to get away from him, but he proceeds to try and pull me out of the car. Well, then he loses his grip, falls to the ground, and I run him over. What happens next is nothing short of a fiasco. The police arrest me. They drive me hours away from home. I'm fingerprinted, cavity searched, and booked with bail set at $100,000. How did this happen? How did I end up here? As I drag my mat to my cell, I can't help but play back the tape of my life. I keep hoping that I'm going to wake up from this nightmare. I settle into my bunk, and I begin to go through the contents of a medium-sized cardboard box that the deputy had given me. When I come across something that I hadn't seen in a long time, and it was there in that cell, the one thing that I had purposely stayed away from was now my only hope, the Bible and what it represented. I turn away. No one knows where I'm at. And nobody cares. I turn back to the box. And begrudgingly, I take the Bible in my hands and I cry, God, if you get me out of this, I promise, I will stop doing what I'm doing and I will live my life for you. I wish that I could tell you that I was miraculously released from jail and I was cured of all my heartache and brokenness. But that was only the beginning. I continued to work in the sex industry and wasn't sure what was to become of me. The first lawyer I spoke to said I could be facing attempted murder charges. I was living in a constant state of fear. My future was in someone else's hands, and there wasn't anything that I could do about it. After about eight months of waiting, the verdict was in. The DA had asked to see me before we went into court. I was terrified. But then he tells me that he's dropping all charges. It's like it never happened. I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. God had come through on his end of the deal. But now, it was my turn. So, I left the sex industry in September of 2011. It was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. But it was game time. There wasn't any more running from my problems. I had to face them head on. The two years to follow were times of extreme hardship and testing. I wanted to give up. I wanted to go back to the money. But I knew it was time to press in. So with gritted teeth and tears, I stuck it through. During this time, I discovered my true worth. And a new perspective was released on my life. So what was it 
that caused this change of heart. I had everything that society says we should strive for, money and power. Only no matter how much money I had, it was never enough. There was still a void. Have you ever felt that way? You could have the highest paying job, the nicest car, the coolest house, but at the end of the day, you still feel like something is missing. That was me. While I was still working in the sex industry, I decided that I wanted to go church shopping. And I actually found a church that I really liked because they didn't judge me. But boy, did they have every reason to. I mean, I walked up in there and my Daisy Dukes and my boobies hanging out and my crazy high stilettos, my makeup from the night before. <laughs> but no one told me I needed to change. They just loved me. They encouraged me. They highlighted my talents. And they told me time and time again that I'm valuable and that I was created for great things. I didn't know how to receive what they were telling me. See, I was conditioned as a child to believe that I was good for nothing, that I was a nuisance, that I would never amount to anything. But on September 11th, 2011, I made a decision. No longer was I going to live or identify with the labels that people had placed on me. Labels like worthless, ugly, stupid, failure, pathetic, useless, crazy, slut. I learned to cast off my old self. The selfishness, the addictions, the anger, the violence. I stand before you tonight totally transformed. I am not who I used to be. I've risen from the ashes of my past. I am healed and whole. No longer am I carrying the labels of worthless, unwanted, and unloved. I no longer identify as a victim of my circumstances. I've forgiven my father, and we have an amiable relationship with one another. I no longer blame him for my misfortunes. What was meant to destroy me became the impetus to my destiny. And I can truly tell you that if it wasn't for that God encounter, I would still be using my body as currency. I found out that my worth is not attached to the labels that others had placed on me or the bad choices that I had made. I discovered that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I am loved, valued, and purposed. Shortly after I left the industry, I was prompted to apply to be a missionary. A crazy thought, I know. I mean, who was going to want a psycho ex-stripper who ran over her boyfriend as a missionary? (laughs) But nonetheless, I applied. And I was accepted for a nine-month mission to the Philippines. It was after 25 years, I finally knew my purpose, to let others know their value and feel loved. I'm no longer a victim of my circumstances. So you've heard my story. But what about yours? Were you overlooked? Have you struggled with self-worth? Are you yearning for love and acceptance? Has it caused you to not make the wisest of decisions? Are you not happy with the person that you've become? I'm here to tell you, it's okay. Your essence is valuable. Choose to live free from the negative labels that people have placed on you. You can rewrite your story. Seek healing. Get around people that are going to love and encourage you. You are not meant to carry guilt, shame, or condemnation. Cast it off. And don't stop dreaming. Keep fighting.
up. Don't give up. <laughs> and don't forget that failure is a part of success. Your story is important. Oh. When we share stories, our stories of adversity, it lets others know that they're not alone. It's time to take hold of your identity. Choose to step out of the victim mentality and into the victor mentality. Know your worth. There isn't anything you have done or will do that could ever lessen your worth. Let me give you an example. If I had a dollar bill and I crunched it up, it's still worth a dollar. But how about if I got that dollar and I threw it on the ground and I stepped on it? Is it still worth a dollar? What if I took that dollar ripped it in half, taped it up, it's still worth a dollar. And such is your worth. No one can take away your value. And no one is perfect. So stop blaming yourself and stop beating yourself up about it. It's time to reclaim what was stolen from you. You are worthy. Maya Angelou sums it up perfectly in her poem, I Rise. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. Will you choose to rise from the ashes of your past and know your worth? Thank you.